Howdy, howdy, howdy. My name's Anachi Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read Paradox Space. In the last episode, we, um... The hell did we do in the last episode? Right, Christmas. So in this episode, it's... We're gonna start with Lady Grimm and the Red Knight, and we're gonna go up until we hit that really long summer teen romance. I'm not sure what's happening in these pictures here. One, one of them seems to be Rose fighting someone, and the other one, I don't know what's going on there. But the story is by a Mary Borsellino, and the art was by a J.N. Weedle. The turtle wants to buy the book. Or, or are they just books in general? Turtle buys the... Or the turtle wanted the book, but they didn't have enough money. And then... Dark Lord Casey's like, hey, here you go. Say nothing! Okay, so... There didn't seem to be words that... Oh. Hey, check it out! I'm a totally harmless minstrel here to lay down some gentle lute solos. I got all kinds of high fantasy heartthrobs writing, writing to me for hints on how to be this fresh and delicious and sensitive and non-threatening. The Goblin King wore flowing pantaloons before I schooled him in respectful seduction. Well, to be honest, what I, what I said was, Jareth, dude, you know all those cool contact juggling... Why... Juggling shirts? Why not show off... the Show those sweetly... Hold on. Well, to be honest, what I said was, Jareth, dude, you know all those cool contact juggling tricks? Why not show those off? Sweet noble ladies are going to love seeing those balls. He extrapolated in ways I never expected, but it seems to work for him, so I guess good job for me. That's kind of the motive of this narrative, though, isn't it? Subordinates becoming even more adept than their beloved masters. I mean, the thematic heart of the whole thing. Little necromancer amphibian kid is going to wind up all Sam Gamgee at the end. Hey, are you li still listening? My lady, I suspect I sense something duplicitous about this mysterious figure. Are there words? There's not words. I'm highly attuned to the presence of sinister motives, and I sense none here, Viceroy. I thought our long travels had cured you of your timidity. Oh, they have, my lady. I speak not out of fear, but of skepticism. I suspect this bard seeks to hamper our progress. I wouldn't mess with the progress of a protagonist. What? What do I look like, an idiot? Wait, don't answer that just yet. Okay, now you can answer it. But the deal is that over this bridge is a land with a bunch of serious problems. High taxes and bad harvests and all that stuff that sucks for the lands. And the people in the lands like, as well, I guess? If you want to get literal, rather than just assuming that I was encompassing the people as well as the actual physical land when I said there were problems being had, and for reasons I'm going to just skip over for now, I gotta protect it from more bad shit adding to their already impressive pile of shit. They don't need the shit that gothic wizards bring to the party. Their shit reserves are plentiful, so I'm going to have to stop you if you try. Step aside from our path, sir! Also, you may want to consider discussing a pro with a professional your preoccupation with the phallic. What? As she tries to zap, and he does a slash. Did he slash her shirt or her arm? It looks like he slashed her shirt. <gasps> you bear the mark! My birthmark? What is that? Have you heard the story of the Kingdom of the Rainbow Lakes? Beyond the Fire Mountain? Yes, of course everyone knows the story of the vanished royal twins. That's a bingo. Together we can finally overthrow the evil King Noir, usurper of our rightful thrones. He's this creepy monster dog thing straight out of Henson. But like gnarly dark crystal Henson, not the stuff people make off-brand adult puppet shows all about. I don't even know what you'd call a fetishist who was into those Skeksis things. So how about... Wanna come liber- how about it? Wanna come liberate a realm? Yes, brother, I will join you in this quest. Milady? Okay, so, was- okay, I guess that was him reading the story. I don't know, man, like... Was this the turtle reading the story, or was this a thing that was actually happening? Because there was a comic of a few episodes back where this was a thing that was actually happening. Or was that also just the turtle reading and then he just got the next volume? Hmm. Three out of five hats, written by John Gerard and art by Incineraptor. I stumbled upon a collection of reviews of alternating romance novels. Your handiwork, I presume? Yeah, but they're not really reviews of the books. They're reviews of Carcat's spoken interpretation of the books. Allow it to himself. Every goddamn night. Wait a minute, you heard that? I can't believe I have to be the one to tell you this. Your inside voice is like a wrecking ball with a bull horn. At night it's quiet except for the sound of distant horn honks in a husky alternating prose. <laughs> <laughs> I 
After a week of that, all I could think about was vacillation and buckets. I had to let it out somehow, so I made the best of a bad situation. We all have our coping mechanisms. I spend some of the Vantis Theater hour writing, but that hasn't escaped your notice either, I see. <laughs> oh man, the things she says. It's a Mad Cat Pot Boiler featuring Clock Wizard, Chef Wizard, Nine More Wizards, and the Head Honcho Beard Wizard. Three out of five hats. If you're going to review my writing journal, I'd appreciate a little more effort. Where's the sarcastic skewering of my extravagant vocabulary? Why isn't there any commentary on the role of bathos in the text? This strikes me as more lazy than ironic. Well, obviously I'm not done with it yet. And I'll thank you not to pry into my personal writing till I'm ready for an audience. It's an outrageous violation of my privacy. Psst. Is he actually manage managing to whisper? It would be unfortunate if Carcat were to find some new source of nightly reading material. There's an entire library of cl clammy, revolting slam poetry sealed off behind that door. Maybe I'll swap out trashy romance for something stronger. Oh god, why keep out? Nope. You can't be serious. We would all suffer. Why not just burn down the meteor while you're at it? You underestimate my, underestimate my lifetime of desensitizing exposure to high-blooded filth. It'll be awful for me, but it'll be much, much worse for you. Oh, Christ, so you, you'll probably find it all fascinating and multicultural. Mm-hmm. Teresa and Kanaya owe me big for this. I'm taking a gross sweaty bullet for the team here. I'll stop, but be forewarned. My hat-based review system is the glue that binds this book together. What makes you think we want you to stop? Sorry, buddy, Cantown's gonna have to wait. I've got 15 more pages of boring literary discourse to finish. Or else bad things are going to happen. Bad, unspeakable things. So they threatened him with Aridin stuff. Not Aridin. Um, Equius's writings. So that he'd review her stuff better. That's brilliant. Now it's time for The Birds and the Bees by Alex Raphael and Matt Cummings. Hey, Grandpa, where do babies come from? Well... When two people love each other very much, the one with a superior understanding of ectobiological genetic manipulation and transuniversal mechanics of delivery inputs all the necessary coordinates for a series of highly complex paradox cloning. And then they leave them alone so that eventually the babies get put, put on meteors and are sent hurtling through the paper-thin fabric of space and time, until they crash land violently on the Earth's surface where they are often collected from a, by a seemingly random passerby. But not before the stork picks them up himself. Oh, that makes perfect sense! <laughs> Dang it, John. The Steward of the Void. Story by Phil Gibson and art by Shad Andrews. Looks like it's Dave Butler Island. Yes, about goddamn time. Can I help you? No way! Is this place really Butler Island? I'm not sure what you were expecting, but yes. Awesome! Where are the rest of the butlers? Whoa! There are quite a few around here. Our service is most exquisite. Yes, we demand that you allow us to serve you readily. Can, I, can we get you a towel or a fresh glass of milk? Uh, nothing for me, thanks. Do you guys wait on each other, or do you have other butlers doing the butling? We serve whoever visits. Of course, this is an island of refinement, as long as their blood is of a high enough level, of course. How can you allude to such a pro proposition? W what if you specifically need it, like, a towel or something? Is one of these yahoos getting it for you? Or is there, like, some kind of substratum of butlers you got around here I can't see? Like, butler Morlocks. I have never considered this. How do we know whom to serve if we share the same blood cast? Are we not all exceptional in our own way? Equally exceptional! Then who will serve us? Have you seriously not had this problem before? Oh my god! Maybe you are all equally exceptional, but you are not too good to serve. I will be the one to serve you. What a pretentious attitude! I will not stand for this! I will be the one to do the serving around here. You will serve nothing! I will be the one to be ordered... Ordered... Ta uh... Tasks? Okay, tasks here. I have to strongly disagree with this! Excuse me, but I am not worth the effort of being served. You will be served and you will like it. This behavior is, unex is entirely unbecoming. You have been shouting a lot. Please allow me to serve you this ice-cold glass of milk. Your tricks cannot work on me. I demand you serve that to serve that to you. Give it to me. <laughs> oh my god, these guys are insane. Dave, what did you do this time? Hey, you can't pin this on me. All I did was ask, a, ask them a question. 
<laughs> I think that's the... I think that may be the first time on the website Paradox Space where a paradox happened. How about that? Oh, and it looks like the end of Summer Teen Romance is on 413. I don't know which 413, but it certainly was on one of them. So, and I, I noticed that at 1025. Good lord. So, I'm at the temple. Wait, by Phil Gibson and Adrian Garcia. Now, where is this star of the ocean you've been telling me about? Oh, good, you made it! Oh, it's a Feffrey. Oh, it's, it's a Feffrey and a radio. Okay, I, I assumed it was Dave because of the red. Go inside! You should see a hallway and a large chamber at the end. That's where the star is? Yep. So tell me more about this ocean star. It sounds like a real whale of a treasure. Haha, <laughs> good one, Aradia. Yes, the star of the ocean is an heiress heirloom that went missing hundreds of sweeps ago. It's a very important part of the Empire, and I really appreciate the kelp you've been you've given me uh, tracking it down. Well, you know me. Always excited to find another treasure to dig up. I think I found it! It looks like some sort of starfish geode. I can see it! Isn't it a breathtaking sight? Truly magnificent. As soon as I can get across the room, I'll have that sculpture for you, Feth. Sculpture? Yeah, you wanted this ornate sculpture, right? Oh, dear me, no! The less is in the, the, less is in the chamber. It's kind of like a... It's kind of like a pet that's been missing for ages. It loves her. Can I at least keep the sculpture? How did they not know where a giant starfish was? Sprite Con? Story by Phil Gibson and art by Hanny Brosh. Man, Phil Gibson has been busy. Is that a Squiddle Sprite? What the heck is that one? Isn't that Death from Problem Sleuth? I think that's Death from Problem Sleuth. Let's see. There's some sort of horror terror. There's Rose Sprite. There's, uh... Dog and cat sprite freaking out at each other. Is that a sweet bro in hell of Jeff sprite? It is. And there's Snowball. Or Snowman. The Snow... Snowman? Snowwoman? The Queen. Ho ho ho! Welcome all sprites to this year's Sprite Con. Before we get into the... This year's real rip snorter of a gathering, we have a few... Ho ho! Announcements. I don't think she just laughs like that, but okay. Um... We have a couple of panel reschedules and a guest signing and guest signing times that have been rearranged to suit both time and space available. Let's see now. Beep Pew Universe birthing video games aren't just for kids anymore. Announcements meet and greet. The hard hair of the furthest ring in you. Riddle Workshop. Uh, cryptic Wingdings, a lesson in Parsene Sprite Speak. Prospect vs. Dirsh Chess Club Meetup. Signings. Oh, hey there, Cal. Oh, they, hey there, Cal. Um, costume contest? What to expect when you're expecting a null session? Something you've been something nemesis. Hmm. Auditorium B. Okay, then. Signing that orange weirdo. Okay, so that must. Something, uh, probably Alchemy Workshop. Something Red Herrings Afternoon with David Brenner. Okay, then. Of course we can't just tell you what the changes are. What would be the fun in that? <laughs> what? But how do we find out where to go? Purr, purr, meow, 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 purr. Yeah, knock off the crazy hoofbeast leavings. Just tell us what the goddamn... Tell us the goddamn schedule already. When did a car cat sprite happen? You're a clever young lad. I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out in no time. Now, who wants cookies? Don't be shy now. Fuck you! Okay, step step off there, Poppin' Fresh. And you, without an inside voice... That's someone's grandma, you can't be that way to her. Fuck you too! Look, you want help with your goddamn schedule or not? Fine, what fucking ever, just get on with the shit show! Yeah, that's what I figured. I know it's our job to be all coy with the info, but if we just can just chill on that shit for a day or two, we're gonna have a e much easier go at this thing. Then you can get back to your giggle snort Heidi, Heidi talk or whatever the fuck. I don't know, how much do you think it should cost? Dad Sprite? See, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about right there. I trust that you, and, and you and your plump puppety rump betrayed me, whatever. Your programs have the new schedules in them so you can use that. Or not, I don't really care. Unless you want to get go get that frog girl's autograph, that shit's pretty tight. So, Gray's here often. 
Hussy, what the- There's a Hussy Sprite! Problem Sprite. The cod piece, as Gamzee is just straight up the bard from Bard Quest. There's another one of Sweet Bro or Hello Jeff. Security's not letting him in, though. Hmm. Riddle Workshop. How to hold back just enough information so your player doesn't think you're useless. There's a... A Mom Lalan Sprite. There's a Calliope Sprite! Is that a horror tear just wearing Feffery's face, or is that Mina's face? This is happening. It's 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 a Nick Cage sprite, but it's how is this happening? <laughs> Thank you for making this one of the best sprite cons this old soul has seen in years. Next year we will be holding sprite con, and well, we can't just give the location away now, can we? <laughs> God damn it! Who the hell is the planning committee for this? This is pure bullshit. That's I'm done with this shit show. No, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to Sprite by Sprite West next year. SSSW keeping Austin Atlantis weird, bitches. I'm out. Yeah, this was interesting. Relationshipping. Written by Phil Gibson and art by Rennie Kingsley. Oh. Hey, Fef, wanna get flushed? Has this ever happened to Mew? Your personal relationship's not meeting your expertations? Here at United Personal Express, let us whisker away all your shipping problems. And of course, we guarantee shipping to all quadrants. Red to black, we've got every category covered. That <laughs> Call us today, we guarantee shipping to all quadrants. Are there words on this? How come there haven't been any weird words on them lately? Those were fun. <clears throat> Wait, was that... There wasn't even the end on it. It just was. I guess it's just an ad. But now we're at Summer Teen Romance, which is 50... 51 pages. Buzz, buzz, haha, <laughs> whatever. I'm a cicada laugh my ass off. Who did... Who did this? Let's see. Story by Zach Morrison. Art by Zach Morrison and John Griffiths. Colors by Shelby Craig. Well, this is just going to be amazing. But it's also the end of the episode. So, this has been Anashi Sasuke. This was episode 7. I almost said 71. That, <laughs> that is wrong. Of Let's Read Paradox Space. If you liked it, a like and a subscribe would be groovy. If you didn't, you don't need to do either one of those things. And I will see you all in the next one. Later.